Okay, let's look at finding the x-intercepts and the vertex of a parabola. Here's our problem. It says find the x-intercepts and the vertex, the coordinates of the vertex for this parabola. This equation, this parabola, or this equation creates a parabola if we were to graph it. And it says if there's more than one x-intercept, separate them by commas. So first of all, understand that any time you have a quadratic equation like this, if you were to graph it, it's going to look like s one of these. Actually, it could look like these or some other similar ones. It could be a, it's going to always be a curve, and it could be a curve that's l you know sitting up here like this, such that there's no x-intercepts. Remember, the x-intercept is where the line crosses the x-axis. So it doesn't cross here at all, so there's zero intercepts. It could be a curve that sits just barely on the x-intercept, or on the x-axis, so there's only one x-intercept. Or it could be a curve that actually crosses in two places. So there could be more than one x-intercept. Right? So there's two parts to this equation. First part is the x-intercept. That's what I just explained. And the second part is the vertex. The vertex is this point on a parabola. It's either the highest or the lowest point. It depends on whether the parabola faces up, in which case the vertex is the lowest point, or if the parabola points down, the vertex is the highest point. Okay, So that's just some terminology concepts. If we take a look at our process, then how do we figure out where this crosses the x-axis? First of all, understand that any time that a line crosses the x-axis, then the y-coordinate is 0, right? So if we were to look at a, at a coordinate plane and we look at this point right here, that's on the x-axis, isn't it? Well, what's the y-value? It's 0. So this might be uh, 2 comma 0, right? Or if we look at this point, maybe that's 1, 2, 3, 4, that's negative 5 comma 0, isn't it? So the y coordinate is always going to be 0 on the x axis. So if we look at this and we say, oh, well, in order to find out what the x value is, all we have to do is let y equal 0. So all we have to do is put in a 0 for the y. x squared plus 10x plus 21. Now we just solve this for x. So, of course, in order to solve this, we have to factor. And that's going to be x plus 7, x plus 3. And, of course, we do our two little mini problems. And what we're going to get is x is going to equal negative 7 and negative 3. So, those are the x coordinates. And we know that the y coordinate is 0. So, therefore, our x intercepts our x intercepts are negative 7, 0, and negative 3, 0. Okay, now that we've found the x intercepts, now we get to do the second part of the problem, which is to find the vertex. So, as we no, we found the x-intercepts of negative 7 and 3, so therefore we have those. So that means that our parabola has to look like one of these. It's going to cross at these points, negative 7, 0, and negative 3, 0, and it can either open upward or it could open downward. We don't know. But our vertex is always going to be on this axis of symmetry. In other words, if we were to fold this in half, this axis of symmetry is going to be right in the middle, right? It's going to be exactly in between those. It doesn't matter wh whether it's opening upward or downward. So, to find the x coordinate of this vertex, we can use the midpoint. 
and of course we know that the midpoint is going to be adding the two x values together and dividing by 2. So we add negative 7 and negative 3, we get negative 10 divided by 2, and our x coordinate of this vertex is negative 5. Now there is another way to find that vertex. If we think of our parabola as the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants, then the x coordinate is going to be a formula. Nice. Negative a over negative b over 2a. So negative of the b coordinate 2 times the a coefficient. I said coordinate, but I meant coefficient. So in this case, a is 1 and b is 10. So if we do a negative b over 2a, then that's going to be a negative 10 over 2 times 1, which is equal to negative 5, and that's exactly what we got on the previous. So either of these methods is just fine. If you think that it's easier to take the two x values and add them up, divide by 2, that's going to give you the x coordinate, or you can use this formula, negative b over 2a, and get the same answer. So that's just the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now we've got to find the y-coordinate. So that means that we can take this x equals negative 5 and plug it into our original equation, which is, let's go back here. It's a, uh, what is our original equation? It's x squared plus 10x plus 21. So x squared plus 10x plus 21. That's y equals. So we plug in the negative 5, square it, plus 10 times negative 5 plus 21. And our y is going to equal 25 minus 50 plus 21. So that's negative 25 plus 21, which is negative 4. <coughs> so therefore our vertex is going to have the coordinate negative 5, negative 4. If we look here, we've got our answer. Here's our parabola. We've got two parts. The x-intercept and the coordinate of the vertex. Here's our x-intercept, here's the coordinate of the vertex. Okay, here's another quick example. So we want to find the x-intercepts and the coordinates of the vertex for y equals x squared minus 14x plus 49. Well, of course, we know that the x-intercept has y equals 0. So we set that y equal to 0, x squared minus 14x plus 49. We have to factor. So it's going to be x minus 7 times x minus 7. And what we get here is x equals 7. So our x intercept is going to be 7, 0. Okay? That's our first point, first part. So what that means is now we have to find the vertex. What that so if we take a look here, if we have only one x intercept, that means that the parabola either is opening up and sitting on that x axis or opening down and sitting on that x axis. So we've got only one point, one x intercept, and therefore the vertex has to be in the very same place like there's there's no calculating that vertex like there was in the other example so our vertex is also 7 0 and our x intercept 7 0 and that would be our final answer so this one comes out to be quite a bit simpler